Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. This is a preview video for the heavyweight fights that are on the undercard for the Anthony Joshua and Kubrat Pulu fight this weekend in London. So we've got two on the card apart from the main event. You have Martin Bacoli and Sergey Kuzman, a decent little crossroads fight. And you also have Huey Fury versus Marius Vak. Huey Fury says he's got a lot to prove and he's going to prove it in this one. And I guess in general, the undercard overall, a general comment before we get into the two heavyweight fights. It's not the strongest overall and especially when you consider that uh, in the United Kingdom, people will be forced to pay £25 for the card. And there's been a lot of chatter online about that. And I did have some extended thoughts on that on my Patreon, uh, patreon.com forward slash boxing square. Check that out at your leisure. But overall, I think, you know, this was always going to be the cost of Joshua's uh, pay-per-view events going forward after it was risen to that a year ago. No matter the sort of finessing and the statements that were made at the time, this is just the new normal. And probably um, there will be some sort of pay-per-view creep elsewhere other cards sort of starting to go a little up and up and up and we'll be fed the line well what do you expect we um, have to be able to make these fights and this is the way to do it so fans I think you know we can expect we will be uh, putting our hands just a little bit deeper into our pockets um, in 2021 and beyond so for Huey Fury he's facing at Marius Vak and this is one of these fights where it's something in between what he had been facing at world level Alexander Povetkin, Kubrat Pulev, Joseph Parker and some of the lower tier guys that he dropped back down to Chris Norad for example Sam Sexton so this is going to provide some rounds no doubt Marius Vak has proven to be a durable guy but Marius Vak is also very far removed from his prime and I believe he's only really sort of still getting these sorts of um, fights primarily because he put up a more um, a credible effort better than expected against an out of shape Dillian White at the end of 2019 so I think that's allowed him to sort of just push the boat out just a little bit further to keep getting these sorts of fights and no doubt decent paydays so I think um, some people will sort of say Marius Fuck is still halfway decent but he, in reality He's not. He's durable. I mean, I don't think a lot of people saw that Martin Bacoli absolutely obliterated Marius Vak about 18 months ago. People forget that. But an out of shape Dillian White did labor to a win over Vak. And I think Vak is still getting quite a bit of credit for that. I mean, I remember there were people saying that uh, Marius Vak would beat Ajit Kabiyal, which is laughable to me. Uh, but I do think that Huey Fury is going to win this one. But how he wins it is going to be important for his career because he has been a little bit on the offensive end, um, coming up short in recent fights at world level. He's able to survive. He's able to show at times some slick defensive skills, but he just doesn't do enough on the offensive end. The output is too low. He doesn't commit enough. And when he does, it was uh, often the slinging right hand, which sometimes looked rather ungainly. But of this fight, he says he's a tough man, Marius Fuck. He's been in with some great fighters, pretty much everyone, including a world title challenge. I'm looking forward to doing a job on him. This is definitely one not to miss. It's been a while and I'm ready to show what I'm all about. Vak brings a power and size you can't switch off for a second. I want these kinds of fights as these fights will help me achieve what I need in boxing. I'm expecting a tough fight with Vak. I've seen a few of his fights and we've done our studying, training and sparring. I'm ready for all these serious fights out there. I've had vast experience and I belong on the world level. I expect to be knocking on the door for another shot at World Honours again very soon. I've been living in the gym, working on a lot of different aspects of my game, perfecting what I needed to do. Everything happens for a reason. You've just got to stay patient and fight whoever they put in front of you. Boxing is about learning and taking fights. If you believe that you are the best, then you will take on anyone and everyone. Huey Fury there, his statements in a press release that came out this week. So what do I expect of this fight? I mean, I don't think it's going to be a barn burner by any stretch. If I was to hazard a guess how it's going to turn out, I think Huey Fury is going to dominate it in the sense of winning the rounds, but it may not be a dominant performance, if you get what I mean. I don't think he's going to be going in there and just absolutely piecing at Marius Vuck up round after round and, you know, really hurting him or anything like that. 
I think it's going to be a smart, you know, solid performance by Huey Fury, where he will use the jab, he will use angles, he will utilize movement, and he will be hitting him with the jab, you know, early and often. And I think throughout the fight, we will see some of those right hands coming in, some of them landing, some of them not. But I think overall, it will be another performance where we might be left sort of looking at this going, where's he really going in the heavyweight division and we probably need to see one or two of these sort of types of fights again maybe at a slightly higher level to really be convinced about what he's going to do where he's really going to be because i've got to say at this point i'm a little unconvinced about some of these statements that he belongs at world level he's come up short each time he's 25 years old now at some point because he's you know sort of you know honing in on close to 30 fights on the record now He is going to be what he is. It is one of these cases that at some point you can't say Huey Fury's a baby. You have to say Huey Fury is Huey Fury. This is how he fights. This is what he's going to do. He's got a good chin. He's got some good skills, but he seemingly can't put it all together. I would like to see him put on a very dominant performance, but I'm not expecting it. But even if he does against Marius Fuck, that doesn't necessarily tell us that one, he's ready for world level, and two, that he could foot it at world level. It just tells us that he dominated an old and broken down Marius Vuck, who has been stopped in the past two years by a guy in Martin Bacoli, who's also on this card. So it's sort of hard to know what we can sort of take out of this fight, even if Huey Fury does look good. I know there will be some people that will make comparisons well, he did a better job than Dillian White. But Dillian White coming into that fight with Marius Vak was out of shape and probably shouldn't have been in that one in hindsight. He laboured to a win there. It didn't look very good. I know some people won't agree with me on my sort of assessment on this, but in a way, even though this is a much better opponent, sort of the opponent that he needed that step in between, you know, the low level dross and world level sort of he'd been yo-yoing in between, it still doesn't tell us what we need to know. I don't think it does. I know some people will hold up, hey, if he beats Marius Vak, he's ready. I just sort of think that's a leap too far. I expect him to win and look decent at times, but it could be one of these ones that it sort of devolves into a bit of a ball fest too. And given Huey Fury is not necessarily a um, television fighter that's um, excelled in terms of the entertainment front, you know, that won't be great for his profile either. This is the entertainment game after all, as well as a sport and a business. It's um, multiple things all wrapped up in one. What do you make of the fight? And Martin Bacoli and Sergei Kuzman, don't want to sort of um, labour the point with this one, because I have done previews on this before, because this is not the first time that it was going to be held. It's kind of like the main event in some regards, that because this fight has, you know, seemingly been on the docket for some time and pushed back and postponed because of the pandemic, some of my enthusiasm has sort of waned a little bit. You know, it's sort of, you know, it's almost like you just want to get it over with because it's been hanging around so long. But I'm still sticking with my original prediction, which I think this is a very good style matchup for Martin Bacoli. Sergei Kuzmin coming forward, who's not going to give him a lot of movement, rather flat-footed. He is dangerous, he is a puncher though, and he, um, if Bacoli's not careful, he can get caught. But this is the sort of guy that Martin Bacoli is, the taller man, longer levers, who likes to face guys that are you know, somewhat a bit static. I think this is a good style matchup, and he has the um, ability here, I think, to um, do a number on Sergei Kuzman. It's one of these crossroads fights for both. Kuzman hasn't looked great in the past year or two, and he got dominated by Michael Hunter. Bacoli had a good fight with Michael Hunter back in 2018. He got knocked out late in that one. He was injured, but also he there were a few things that weren't quite right for there. So Hunter, you know, through his sort of in-and-out um, style, was able to expose a few holes in Martin Bacoli's game. Bacoli had to go away back to the drawing board to try and work on a few things. So they've changed a few different things with his training, also his preparations. Apparently he wasn't eating in the day of the fight and all that sort of stuff. So they've had to actually make a few adjustments and he's looked much better in his fights since then. Although it has to be said, even though they've been against you know durable um, gatekeepers, etc., Those guys are only of a certain level. Kuzman is probably a cut above most of them. But as I mentioned, he dominated Marius Farquhar about 18 months ago or so. I think he has the potential here to dominate Sergei Kuzman and really piece him up. So I am expecting a Piccoli win. And he has to win and look good 
to help his stocks in the heavyweight division because in many respects he's become a bit of a forgotten man people aren't talking about him I think at this point he is rather underrated as opposed to back in 2018 because of all the gym stories and everything coming out of the UK the hype and buzz for Bacoli sparring with Joshua at the time he was overrated then and he hadn't done much in the ring to sort of justify the hype hype but now he's probably underrated and he's been putting on performances that deserve more hype so yeah maybe this fight will be the one that's that stepping stone to the next fight of significance because ultimately that's where he's looking to go is to a much bigger and better fight i'm not saying he's going to be title bound after that but he's going to have a much better opportunity to get in position for a title and to a big fight if he can do a number on kuzman i think there is the potential for it what do you make of these fights what do you make of uh, kuzman's chances I'm, you know, I don't want to say I've all but written him off, but I do expect that Martin Bacconi is going to win this one and probably look relatively good in the process. Drop a comment, loud and often, hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.